Hi boys and girls, welcome to Primary 5 Online Art Lesson. A few of you have been asking me for some ideas for art, so I thought I'd do one for you today. I'm going to keep it quite simple, um, because I don't know what you've all got at home, and it's quite hard to do this with a mobile phone. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw some hills. And it's going to look quite cartoony, so we want the hills to be quite steep, and we're quite rounded. So we're going to start high at this side, and we're going to do a nice big hill. And then it's going to come down and sweep across your page. Now, it might be that you've got some hills in the background. So from here, I'm going to draw some little hills in the background. Okay. And you can continue that up. All right. Then at the top of the first hill, the first hill right at the front, you're going to draw a house or a barn or whatever kind of building you want. I'm going to switch off just now and I'm going to draw my barn and then I'll put the video back on and tell you the next steps. Okay, so you can see that I've drawn a barn at the top and a fence down the front hill. So what I'm going to do is the, the lines that I'm going to keep, I'm just going to go over with a black permanent marker. Okay, don't worry if you've not got one, you don't need to do everything exactly like I'm doing at home. Now, you can use a ruler if you want your lines to be completely accurate and straight. However, this is a kind of cartoon style drawing, so it's not about being absolutely perfect. Take your time and get it as neat as you can. And any lines you don't want, once you've finished this stage, you can rub out. Okay. So when you're doing your fence, think about the lines that you want to keep. You don't want to keep these ones that cross the post. So draw your fence posts first, go around them. And then you will simply join them together like that. Okay, and you're going to do that the whole way up. Okay, so you can see that I've added a sun and all I'm going to do now is draw some trees. So I'm going to sketch them in pencil just so that I know what I'm, I don't make any mistakes. So I'm going to draw, not your usual trees, I'm going to make them a little bit more cartoony. So the first one I'm going to draw is just going to look like a one big leaf. So you can see the basic outline of a leaf and inside that I'm going to decorate it later on with different patterns. The next tree I'm going to come lower down and this time I'm going to draw a square. Well not really a square, it's more rectangular. And I'm going to put small squares in I keep saying squares, I mean rectangles, just ignore me boys and girls. And the next one, I'm going to do this in the background. Okay, and I'm going to go up and up at this side. And I'm going to make this like lots of leaves in together. Okay, so you can't really see that until I go over it and um, black outline. So I'll do that for you and then I'll put the video back on. Okay, so you can see that I changed the design just slightly when I was going over in black paint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put little designs in to my tree. So I'll do little twirls, spirals on this one. And because I'm using permanent marker when I go over it in paint, it, it, it won't smudge. And on this one, I'm just going to do a pattern of a leaf. And you'll all have your own ideas, so just do what suits you best. The middle one, the rectangular one, I'm going to leave because I'm just going to do the solid colours. Okay, so for each field, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create patterns. All right, so each field... I'll do this one. This is one field. So I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do wavy lines. Splitting my field. And I'm going to draw different patterns in each one. 
ok I might keep the two end ones the same and then the middle one will be slightly different and I'm going to do that for each one so I'm going to separate this field here just by doing the double line and then I'm going to decorate with patterns in each one. And then I'll do go on and do the big space at the front. Now this will have a lot of different sections. So take your time and fill it in as much detail as you can. Okay, so you can see that I've now filled in all my fields. Oh, different shapes, different patterns. And what I'm going to do now is colour them all in. So at this point, you can use pen, pencil, crayon, pastels. Anything you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these paints. Um, so these paints are just really, really cheap paints. I think I got them possibly from B&M. They give off a really, really pale colour. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paintbrush. And when you're using these paints, it's the same as what I do in school. And make sure that it's not too wet. Okay, so when you get your paint, keep... Going round and round and round till you get a nice, thick, creamy paint. That way you get a much, much better colour. Okay? And then you decide which section you're going to do. I would say start at the top and work your way down so that your hands don't get wet. Or you don't put your hand in the wet paint, rather. So I'm going to start with the tree. And I'm just going to carefully do each section. I'm not going to paint the whole tree because I want shading in my tree. So I'm going to do different leaves and create some sort of shading. Okay. Just so it looks a little bit different. And you can change this as you go along. You'll have different colours and you'll be using different things from I Am. The idea is I want a lovely, bright, colourful painting. Okay. So the background noise, boys and girls, is just Abby creating lots of mess beside me. And occasionally you hear her singing with her headphones on. Mom. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So don't... The paint shouldn't... Um, all blend together because you shouldn't be having it so wet that it runs and if you've got the nice big thick black border that like that that I have your paints won't even touch each other if you find that one section is getting a little bit wet simply stop and work on a different area so I'm going to leave that tree just now because I don't want to keep working on the same area all right and what I'm going to do with my T in the middle, my square one, is I'm going to go from red to orange, fr sorry, from yellow to orange to red on the outside. So all my warm colours. So I'm going to start with the middle section so that by the time I get to the end section, the green tree next to it is nice and dry so that I'm not smudging. So I'm just getting my yellow paint here, which is a bit muddy just now because the red next to it is running in, but it doesn't matter. Okay. I could clean it, but I want to get this done for you. Okay. I'm then going to do some of the other sections, but I won't keep my, my phone on while I do that. I'll come back and show you every now and again. Okay. Okay. So you can see, boys and girls, where I've put some of the colour on. Um, the black pen, any designs have faded slightly because there's now some watery paint over it. But don't worry, because once that's completely dry, I can get my pen and go back over it. Okay, so don't worry about things like that. You can change that afterwards. I'm using brown just now, and it's not very dark. So if I wanted to darken that down, I would just add a little bit of black. And remember, black's a really, really strong colour. So it would just be a tiny, tiny, tiny little amount. Okay, so mix that in and just add a little, little bit of it at a time. It's normally better to mix it with the brown um, rather than put it straight onto your painting because it can make it 
too dark. Okay, we don't want black. Jeez. I mean, almost got a little bit of Abby singing. <laughs> almost. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, so you can see how the colour is starting to make it look nice and bright and colourful. So what I'm going to do now is just remind you of one of the techniques we used in school. When we were painting, we didn't always add the paint onto the paper. Sometimes what we did, if you remember back, is we put a little bit of water on. And then we just took a little bit of paint and we dropped it into the water. And that gave us a nice light light colour. Now you might not be able to see that properly because I'm just using a phone but we're just dropping in some of the paint okay and it gives us a different sort of effect okay so let me do it again at this side for you and I'll use a darker colour this time okay so I'll put the, the water on and these are just really really simple paints to use if I was using proper watercolour paints or acrylics it would be so much darker and brighter but you can see that as you Put the water in and when it gets too wet just simply dry your brush dry it off on a clean cloth and then you can just move the paint about wherever you want it to go and that creates a lovely pattern on your paper that you won't get if you just put the paint on so you can see the purple here is where i've painted directly on and then the pink and the blue on either side create a lovely pattern because the paint just goes with the water and spreads out naturally and that's quite a nice effect so i'm going to do some of that and then hopefully we should nearly have a finished painting to show you well finally boys and girls oh, finally boys and girls that's it finished so you can see that if you use really thick paints if you use acrylic paints or a better quality paint than i've got or pastels or felt tips you'd get really bright vibrant painting this one's quite it's they're like watercolor paints are very thin so it's quite a subtle painting but you can see all the different designs um, and if there's a bit you don't like you simply cut that piece off and you focus on the bits that you do like so happy painting or drawing or sketching or coloring <coughs> excuse me and remember, and take lots of photographs and tweet them so that I can see your painting or your drawing. Have fun. Bye.